electromagnetic radiation EMR, or electromagnetic fields EMF, have become a significant issue in regards to the potential health effects, the design and construction of healthy and green buildings. We will explore the various indoor and outdoor EMF and RF sources which can impact our indoor environment. We will see what type of radiation it is, where it comes from, how it can be measured, analyzed and how it can be reduced to create healthier indoor environments. Let's first have a look at low frequency EMF issues. Power lines and wiring systems are used to transmit electrical current from generating stations to the end user. The alternating current in electric distribution systems produces magnetic and electric fields. We refer to these systems as line sources. About 20 years ago, the first scientific studies were published suggesting potential health effects such as cancer and leukemia associated with elevated levels from magnetic fields from power lines. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the amount of current flow, the wiring configuration, and the distance from the source, for example the power line. Measurement for magnetic fields are performed with a magnetic field meter or Gauss meter. The most common unit for measuring AC magnetic fields is milligauss. Most of the research and concern in the US is linked to magnetic fields, while in Europe the electric field portion is also taken into consideration. Step-down transformers reduce the high line voltage from transmission and distribution lines to a usable voltage inside our buildings. We refer to them as point sources. They emit significantly higher magnetic field levels than power lines and electrical wiring systems. Their fields also reduce significantly faster with distance from the source. Electrical transformers are used to recharge or operate our electrical appliances and motors inside appliances such as air filters, refrigerators or fans are also point sources and can create large magnetic fields. Therefore, the proper placement of step-down transformers, chargers and electrical appliances is important in keeping field levels low. Here is a step-down transformer located directly next to a school classroom, a situation that should be avoided. Here we see a magnetic field from an air filter. With the air filter off, the field is zero. Turning the unit on creates an extremely high field in its proximity. Circuit breaker panels can also be a source of high magnetic fields. Therefore, electrical panels should not be located next to exterior bedroom walls. Flaws in a building's electrical wiring system are the most common sources for elevated magnetic field levels in buildings. Most of the time these wiring errors are also code violations. Common sources are neutral to neutral interconnections or ganging of neutrals and ground to neutral pathways which can result in stray currents on metal utility lines such as gas or water pipes. In the previous examples, we have addressed low frequency electromagnetic radiation or EMR. Wireless communication equipment works with high frequency electromagnetic fields. Instead of wires, the energy is sent through the air. Our electromagnetic environment has significantly changed over the last decade. The dramatic increase and in abundant use of wireless technologies has altered our exposure of EMR significantly. Most of us use mobile or cellular phones on a daily basis. They are a significant source of RF radiation and the scientific debate is continuing about their potential health effect such as brain tumors with long-term use. However, we personally can decide if we want to use them or for how long. Cellular towers and antennas transmit RF radiation constantly because they operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
Your RF and microwave exposure from the cell sites depends on the distance from the antenna, the direction of the antenna beam, the line of sight condition, and the power transmitted. The Federal Communication Act of 1996 prevents communities from objecting to the installation of cell sites based on health concerns. Often these cell sites are covered or hidden to prevent the general public from becoming aware of their presence in their neighborhood. Measurements for digitally pulsed signals is not easily performed and requires sophisticated instrumentation, adequate training, and experience. We use spectrum analyzers and the appropriate antennas to identify the frequency band and the amplitude or strength of the signal. We find similar technology in our offices and homes. The wireless network, the routers and transmitters. We have the antenna inside our building. Wireless routers should not be placed indiscriminately and close to people. That is our opinion and the opinion of many European school districts and agencies such as the German Department for Radiation Protection. That does not mean that we have to forgo the benefits of wireless technology, but we need to place it appropriately. The new generation of cordless phones, the DEC 6.0 and 5.8 GHz technology, can be significant sources of high indoor RF levels. The reason is, that most of these cordless phones constantly transmit, even when not in use. Let's do a little comparison. Here is a cordless phone which turns itself off after we hang up. So, we basically have a little cell site antenna in our home. And do not forget your baby monitor. Depending on the technology used in the device, it may transmit constant RF radiation next to your baby's crib. The interpretation of safe radiation levels is not universally agreed on. However, most entities agree to the precautionary principle. If we do not know the health's impact, keep the exposure as low as economically feasible. A healthy or green building should also be a low EMF and RF building. For more information on these subjects, please visit our website at emfrf.com.